Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about the Proactivity 1000 series PLC numbering systems and tag database. Now this is very important to understand exactly um, what the numbering systems or the available uh, types are that you can use within your t tag database. And the tag database is nothing more than a label we put to a series of, of um, information and locations within the controller's memory. So the first thing we'll do is take a look at the data types that we can have in our uh, numbering systems here. And if we call up the menu, right, the help menu, you'll see that when you look up data types, you'll see there are multiple data types that we can use. And the first one being Boolean. Now Boolean is either true or false, one or zero, on or off. These are all used for discrete IO and tag names, as well as internal tag names used for logic control. And then we have our integer. Now integers is where we start building these bits together. In this case here, it's an 8-bit unsigned. And the whole or natural numbers range from 0 to 255. So for the 8 bits. Um, or 0 to FF hexadecimal. So they're used for numeric tags. Um, and they're only positive variables within that byte of information. Now then we have... Uh, integer 16 bit and integer 16 bit signed and the range is minus 32,768 to 32,767 and used for numerical tags um, where variables have the potential for negative or positive values that you're going to use. Then we have the integer 16 unsigned and what they're they are is the range is actually from 0 to 65,535 and used for tags that will only have a positive value. We have the integer 16-bit BCD and the integer 16-bit BCD is unsigned binary coded decimal and it has a range of 0 to 9,999 which makes sense because you each, each uh, uh, BCD uh, digit can only have the value 0 to 9. Then we have integer 32 and the um, integer um, 32 signed the range is um, minus 2 uh, trillion 147 million 483 uh, thousand 648 to 2 trillion 147 million 483 thousand 647 and it's used as a default for most of the numeric tags that you have a potential for both negative and positive values. So it's the largest value that we can have there. Then we have our integer 32-bit um, BCD. And this is an unsigned binary code decimal. Has a range from 0 to 99,999,999. And they're used for tags that only represented a decimal numbering system 0 to 9 for each of the digits, as we mentioned before. We have a floating. 32-bit and the floating 32-bit uh, uses the IEEE -E -E, uh, format floating point range and it um, has a more uh, range than in most. We have 3.39 uh, uh, times 10 to the 38th to uh, that's minus 3.39 times 10 to the 38th to positive 3.39 times 10 to the 38th. And the data type for tags is needed to read in this format. And basically, you'll have controllers that actually, um, or information that comes in floating point, we can then read it. And we then have string. String are ASCII or text representation, which allow, which allocates one byte, eight bits per character. They're used for tags that in words, like instructions like ASCII, email, LCD, uh, etc. Then we have constants, and constants, this is a fixed value for an American Boolean tag name. Constants can be integers, floating points, strings, whatever you name them. And when you um, put in a value, like one, uh, for that, that um, constant, it will automatically assign whatever you put that, uh, that data type. For example, if I put 1.0, it'll put a floating point. If I put uh, HI for high, it'll be a string, etc. 
Now, we did do a, um, a post on, on everything you need to know about numbering systems and how they actually work. So I'll put those links down in the, the bottom of the uh, 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 video here so that you can go refer back to them. And we go actually go through um, how we get come up with all these variables and how you actually look at these uh, information. You can also subscribe to our website and you'll get a free... Um, ebook on numbering systems so the next thing we'll do is we'll close that down so there are all of our data types now when we look at data types we can look at our tag database now and this is how we actually will be using those numbering systems and data types so if we call up our data, uh, tag database we can do that under applications tool under the right program you'll see the tag database here or we can go into edit and then we can go to tag database. Either way, it'll call up our tag database for us. And this is it. This is it up screen up the screen here. And last time we created our start stop jog circuit, and we added the jog, and that was uh, and we did a boolean um, tag, and we documented it here. So here's our tag names, our types. Um, then we have our structured type. Okay. We have an address I/O. We have in use, so if it's used, being used in our program, we can actually use it here. We have our forces, whether it can be forced or not. We have rows and columns when we get into um, arrays, and we'll talk about arrays later on in this series. We have the number of characters when we talk about ASCII. We have retentive. This is, means that if we this check mark is checked, it means that the information stored is retentive during a power cycle of their controller. We have our initial value. We have our Modbus address, our start, um, our first Modbus ad address, and our last Modbus address. Um, and then we have initially forced, so we can uh, no longer can we force it or forcible, tell it forcible. We can say when it first powers up if it's forcible. And then we have initial force value either on or off, or or value that we put into that uh, location. We have comments. We have. Um, remote data viewer so there's a an application for um, iOS that will actually allow you to use your, your um, iOS phone to uh, grab information out of this uh, database and that's called the remote access um, default display for format okay so there are all of our different um, headings here under our editor and if I right click on the editor what you will notice is that we again have um, we can auto size the name column auto size um, the columns themselves auto size all columns select all the sales clear we can sort ascending or descending unsort unsort all um, we can actually choose columns and um, we can choose columns here that will allow us to display. You'll see we'll have system ID um, that's currently not displayed. We have wire labels. We have um, in use. So then we have all of these different ones that we can turn either on or off. So let's turn off the remote access. We'll turn off the default format. Um, Modbus start and end. We'll take those off. We'll leave the forces on and the initial value. Uh, we'll take off the rows and columns and then we'll just say okay when we do you'll see that now our we can our headings and our information it's a little easier to read the other thing we can do is we can actually move these these columns around and we do that by clicking and holding and we can drag them to wherever we would like to um, put them so we can also resize them manually each one or as you saw before, we can go in here and we can say auto size that column for me. Now up here, tags are show. This is where we'll spend a lot of the time. We can show all. Or we can invert it and show nothing. When we do that, then we can um, show just our discrete inputs, discrete outputs. So it comes up with our jog. We can show um, booleans, which is our jog work bit that we did last time and so we modify the information or tag to what we want to see so let's just turn those off again 
And say I'm not sure exactly what I want, I can also do a search. And we'll look for jog. Sure enough, there's our jog. And you'll see that um, we have two. We have our jog discrete output input and we have our jog bit boolean, the internal jog bit that we uh, programmed last time. There's our address for it. And you see that these are in use. All right, we can turn that off. We can then um, look at our system data. Now system data is actually information that's stored uh, automatically when we have our CPU. Things like uh, um, first scan flag, always on flag, um, some of our critical and non-critical error bits are going to be located within this area. You'll also see my critical log. It'll come up with uh, uh, logs and our non-critical logs. So all this information is here. Our real-time clock is also located here and our battery voltage. So a lot of information within our system tags that are available when we program um, this uh, logic controller. Okay. Now all the links and documentation can be found on our website at accautomation.ca. And if you like this video, and like to see more, there are three ways in which you can help us out. You can give us a thumbs up so other people can find this information. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also go to ACC Automation and subscribe to our website. When you do, as mentioned before, you'll get, um, you'll be given um, a new content or notification every time new content is, is uh, to put on the site. You'll also get two free ebooks on numbering systems and robust data logging. And the third thing to do to help us out is to tell a friend or colleague about the site. Alright, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.